What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC video. Today we're back talking with Spike Myth Cup. I know a lot of you guys were actually, you know, I, I said it in the video yesterday, I said, hey, you know, let me know if you guys would prefer me to focus more on Spike Myth Cup, or if you guys would prefer me to focus more on Series 13, and it seemed a lot of people, especially in the polls, both on Twitter and on YouTube, it was 70% in favor of Spike Myth Cup, 30% in Series 13. So. We're still going to be doing Series 13 content, you'll still get it at minimum twice a week, but we're going to be focusing more on Spike Myth for the time being, and today, because of that, we're going to be talking about my top 5 new threats in Spike Myth Cup. Urshifu is going to be the first one. It's not really a new threat, but it got so much better, and I think we have to acknowledge it despite that, so this list won't include anything that was previously super, 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 super good, um, but more stuff that either got significantly better or stuff that is a new threat that wouldn't have worked in Dynamax. So yeah, uh, before we get into that, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content. And answer my comment question of the day. What do you think is going to be the new biggest threat or biggest new threat? I guess those are two different things in VGC Spike Myth Cup. So yeah, let's get into it. So of course, we're going to start off with Urshifu Single Strike. You know, Urshifu Rapid Strike also is like definitely on this list it's also super good but i think single strike is the more devastating of the two at the moment um because it doesn't get destroyed by rillaboom uh and it, it, it it's it's just it has more damage output in general so choice banded urshifu single strike with wicked blow and close combat is terrifying in non-dynamax because uh in dynamax there's a little bit more counterplay uh, you have things like Max Airstream, where you can just soak up the hit from Choice Banded Close Combat or Wicked Blow and attack it, or you can Max Guard. However, with Dynamax gone now, uh, Urshifu Single Strike becomes a little bit devastating because your defensive options versus it have been slightly limited. Uh, no longer will you be able to protect versus this Pokemon, as it will always break through the protect, barring you having a Weezing, which is honestly kind of a good answer to this guy. I mean, like, if you're going to deal with it, you might as well have a Pokemon that resists a lot of its hits uh, and then hit it back with like a you know a dazzling gleam or whatever wheezing uh, glaring wheezing runs while turning off the unseen fist letting you protect versus it so yeah obviously no there are better answers than glaring wheezing but i thought i'd mention that too uh so yeah urshifu at 97 speed now that the restricteds are gone as well uh is actually at a pretty decent speed tier it's still getting outsped by things like charizard dragapult regieleki uh anything you know just above 97 obviously but uh 97 becomes a much better speed tier without the restricteds so that's pretty good for it uh it makes it so you don't have to run a focus sash obviously focus sash is like the second best item for urshifu but i would say choice band right now is a pretty close uh pretty close contender just barely taking first because that immediate damage output will hit pretty much anything you're going to be able to one shot opposing gothitel poison jab will let you one shot opposing uh you know tapus depending on how they're built uh wicked blow one shots so many things in the format and close combat with the choice band is still going to be able to ko those incineroars so a lot of options for urshifu here fighting types honestly gets so much better now that max airstream's gone and that's a big thing for them like there's gonna be a lot of good fighting types in this format i think kong Kelder has actually a legitimate niche here and i'm not gonna i tried to exclude all of my hot takes from this list just to be a little bit more objective but you might see a hot take come through once in a while so second one by the way this is no in, part, in, in no particular order it's just five pokemon that i think are extremely notable uh we have gothitel now gothitel is a pokemon that is so good it doesn't even have to run an offensive move. You could put Taunt here, you could put Ally Switch here, and it would still be a menace to deal with. But why is Gothitelle so good? Well, next to things like, next to just super offensive threats like Regidrago or Urshifu, Gothitelle being able to trap in whatever it wants while also denying that first action with Fake Out, since it's five points faster than like the other two big Fake Out users in Incineroar and Grimmsnarl, uh, that's that's pretty huge for it. Uh, it doesn't take much speed investment to get it to do anything. Also, hold on, instead of ally switch, just be a goat and run hypnosis. Uh, but yeah, Gothitelle being able to trap in whatever it wants uh, with an offensive threat is always terrifying. Also, it has Helping Hand. I just remember that too. Helping Hand next to like Regidrago is devastating. Uh, helping Hand next to Urshifu is devastating. 
Denying your opponent the option to switch is just generally not a good thing for them, but a phenomenal thing for you. The option to set up Trick Room for partner Pokemon, like maybe Stack Attacka or a uh, partner like Sylveon or whatever is also very good since uh, while a lot of things are slower in this format compared to restricted formats, the slowest Pokemon do still benefit a lot more from Trick Room uh, than they would in Dynamax because when you're a slow bulky Pokemon in Trick Room, the damage output that you're able to deal is pretty significant and a lot of the ways that people would deal with that in Dynamax was just simply to Dynamax and soak up the hit and try to stall at the Trick Room. With that gone, Trick Room setters and Trick Room Pokemon stocks just went way up, so Gothitelle's phenomenal for that reason. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it, it's just like super good. Reggie Drago, the unsung hero of the Crown Tundra, a Pokemon that has consistently gotten the short end of the stick compared to Reggie Alecki, which also got better here, I'm going to be straight up with you, um, is now probably getting close to being a top tier Pokemon. So the reason for that is uh, Reggie Drago at 80 base speed with a Choice Scarf can in fact outspeed Dragapult, which, you know, barring Reggie Alecki is the fastest Pokemon that we're going to have to see in this format consistently. Uh, and being able to drop Choice Specs Dragon Energy with Dragon's Maw and Stab is ridiculous. So what is that? That's 150 times 1.5 times 1.5 times 1.5. It's a lot of damage. Obviously, Scarf is a little bit better for general damage output. Uh, but I think the Specs, if you have proper speed control, whether it be uh, a faster... Um, Tailwind Pokemon or like a Prankster Tailwind Pokemon or even just like an Icy Wind Pokemon, if you're able to slow down the opposing Pokemon and hit him with a Dragon Energy, there are very few things that will be able to soak up that hit without Dynamaxing. Uh, beyond that, like I said, Gothitelle next to this thing is a little ridiculous because if you lead off Regidrago Gothitelle and your opponent leads off, let's say, Incineroar and... Uh, not Rillaboom. Let's say like, uh, what's what's like a common? I guess Incineroar Rillaboom's fine. Incineroar Rillaboom. What do you do? You fake out the Incineroar to prevent a parting shot, and you probably just, you know, go for a Dragon Energy anyways into whatever is left. You're probably gonna get faked out by the Rillaboom, but then, you know, you get most of your health back uh, from that fake out via Grassy Terrain, and then the next turn, because your Scarf Reggie Drago, you helping hand the Dragon Energy and just pick up a KO on like both of those Pokemon. And what could they do? They're slower than you, they can't U-turn. Their options are so limited that it makes it so Regidrago is just super, super good. So yeah, obviously fairy types on lead, like Sylveon, uh, Tapu Koko, Tapu Fini, Tapu Lele. Those aren't great for, for Regidrago, but it is what it is. That's why you need to be able to be prepared with like a Gothitelle or anything that can get rid of those threats. Because Regidrago also is just like a phenomenal cleanup Pokemon. If you you can literally not even lead off with Regidrago, you can keep it in the back. And if you get rid of uh, faster Pokemon, like let's say like Regieleki, if you get rid of a Steel type or a Fairy type, whatever Pokemon can eat a hit from Regieleki or outspeed it and deal with it before, or Regidrago, before Regidrago hits the field, when it does hit the field, it's effectively good game because of Dragon Energy. So yeah, Zapdos. I think Zapdos had the biggest uh, jump in usage. I'm pretty sure it's like near the top of the usage stats right now. As far as I can tell, a lot of people are running it and I'm going to give you guys some advice real quick. Um, by the way, Zapdos is effectively the new Thunderous. Uh, Thunderous in Dynamax outclassed Zapdos because it was faster and that was pretty much it. I mean, it was also an electric type, uh, but that was, that was pretty much the big reason as a faster flying type with Defiant, it could just annihilate Galarian Zapdos. So that's why uh, whenever Dynamax is gone, Galarian Zapdos comes back. Uh, it's a great Incineroar counter. It has Defiant, so it gets plus one off of Intimidates. It gets plus two off of any other uh, stat drop. And yeah, uh, something that I'm going to say, the advice that I mentioned a second ago. I see a lot of people saying, oh, my Zapdos is so frail. Let's put on a Focus Sash. And, and let's use dual wing beats so I don't break that. Or, oh, no, no, let's use, let's use drill pack, which is just the same thing, but a little bit more accurate. No, no, don't do, no, no. Listen, I need you to hike up your pants and use not focus sash. 
use a better item. You could use bulk up leftovers, Brave Bird, whatever. But I, in my personal opinion, I think safety goggles is probably the best item for it because uh, it allows you to use the Brave Bird. Also, Galarian Zapdos is not frail by any means. 90, 90, 90. Listen, you don't need that sash. Safety goggles, close combat, Brave Bird, quick guard to prevent fake out for your trick room setter if you want to use it as like a trick room support mon or if you're facing off versus an amoongus plus a trick room setter or uh a sleep powder pokemon plus a trick room setter guess what you don't care you don't care about rage powder and you taunt the trick room setter it's anti trick room and it's pro trick room zapdos can do both it's great uh 100 is a phenomenal speed tier since like i said most of the pokemon that you're going to deal with in this format are actually going to be below 100, but there are a few exceptions above 100. Regieleki is like the most notable. Dragapult's the other one, but Dragapult usually can't one-shot Galarian Zapdos. Uh, and just the damage output from this thing's pretty good. 125 attack, close combat, Brave Bird. They're both dealing lots of damage. And this thing is just like a hard Rillaboom check. It's so nice. But yeah, Galarian Zapdos, another one of the fighting types that just benefits so much from Max Airstream being gone. Finally, Sylveon. Something I've seen on quite a few teams. Now, Sylveon is, um, it, it has a huge bonus to it that it didn't have in previous generations, and that's that Sylveon has fire coverage. While this usually didn't matter in previous formats because uh, Sylveon is like a Pokemon that wants to use spread Hyper Voice, uh, and Dynamax doesn't really allow that to deal as much, the fact that its Hyper Voice is now able to deal significantly more damage on average than it would in Dynamax is super good for it, and because things aren't Dynamaxing, Life Orb Mystical Fire deals a pretty good amount of damage. Um, being a pure... Um, what was it? Being a pure fairy type is also nice because it doesn't really care about Urshifu, where Hatterene would take neutral damage from, like, uh... Because Hatterene's, like, a comparable Pokemon as far as damage output and, you know, the environment it wants to succeed in. Uh, but... Uh, it, it doesn't have to deal with like dark moves at all. It doesn't care. It's like a hard Urshifu counter. You can probably EV this thing to take a poison jab from Urshifu pretty effectively. And uh, because we're coming off of like Dynamax, uh, a lot of people have realized how important the move Yawn is in your board positioning and like putting pressure on your opponent. And it has this move. Originally, when I made this move set, I was actually running Detect on the Sylveon because I said, hey, you know, Sylveon has Detect. It's technically best practice to use that when you can, since you don't have to worry about in prison. But to be honest, you're going to be protecting so much with Yawn that you should just run Protect, because otherwise you're going to run out of Detect soon. It also just has a lot of really nice tools. If you want to be crazy and run like Quick Attack to pick up Focus Sash Pokemon, guess what? It's a Fairy type Quick Attack. Um, it has access to Helping Hand. You can use Hyper Beam if you're insane. Psych Up is kind of cool if you're a little crazy. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of tools that Sylveon has at its disposal, but its main thing is it is a solid, bulky Trick Room offensive Pokemon. So yeah, those are my five picks in no particular order, but if I, if I had to put them in an order, I would say number one, two, three, four, five, and maybe switch Regidrago and Sylveon, because Urshifu is the strongest, Gothitelle is the most useful, Zapdos had huge, huge rise in usage because of this format, Drago and Sylveon are about on par with each other, but yeah, uh, those are just my takes for the first couple of days we've been playing this format, obviously a lot of people have been playing it a little bit longer, but now that there are more eyes on it, I just want to make sure everyone says, you know, has, has, a, has a resource to go to if they want to like learn how to play Spike Myth Cup, something I should note, because a lot of people ask me in the comments section, uh, how do I sign up for Spike Myth Cup? Guys, it's not a specific tournament. It's 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 just like a doubles ladder and it's it's on showdown. And if you want to host a ladder tournament for it, all you do is set series 10 rules on show on, on the cartridge game uh, on Sword and Shield. You set up a friendly event, say series 10 rules, but don't bring a restricted, and bam, that's Spike Myth Cup. So yeah, that's it. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like in the video, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.